Coaching changes in the NFL affect fantasy football in drastic ways. We're going to talk about the good and the bad and the downright ugly on today's episode. Make sure you subscribe, stay tuned, and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The fantasy footballers, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. And the world famous coaching changes episode on the way. Mm-hmm. Mucho importante. I've heard from people. This is one of their favorite episodes. That's great. And I believe that people. I believe you don't you do not enjoy doing this episode. All the coaching research, all the boring sludge to go through. Sometimes it feels like a lot. I mean, I, I guess I I guess the truth is I feel like there are some major storylines in the coaching hiring process it's not like i undervalue the changes that happen but then like i don't know there's some teams that did some dumb stuff yeah and 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 it just ruins the season for their players i think there are some very uninspiring hires now i will caution us all that one of the most uninspiring hires to to me personally this is called a swing and a miss um was when i just couldn't really comprehend the hiring of sean mcveigh sure back in the day 30 yeah. 32 minute year old Sean McVay and uh it, it was okay it was, it was, it was I, I think, think they I think they won that one calling that one uninspiring was that's not the right word I think just it felt baffling and uh it was a it, good call egregious <laughs> at the time <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah so you know hopefully some of these so hopefully some of today's uninspiring hires for those fan bases they turn out to be the next McVay. I mean, we are coming off a season in which we we overt. I mean, multiple seasons actually. When you go back to Nagy and then you know Arthur Smith, where we've seen the the, the polarization of impact. Right when you bring somebody in, and um, they make a tremendous difference to the weapons on the team, translates to fantasy football, or vice versa. We're going to talk about a team that made a very splashy head coaching hire, and yet leaves the fantasy community in a place of wondering what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be talking through all of the big coaching changes on today's show. And um, a reminder, three days left, 72 three hours. Three days left. Thanks, Mike. That sounded like you were telling everyone to get on the train before it left. It's pretty that was much good. the same thing. Uh, UltimateDraftKit.com, your last chance for pre-order bonuses. You got to order it by March 1st to get a chance to win a listener league spot. A chance to come and play with us in the Listener League in 2024. It's also the lowest possible price on the UDK, UDK Plus right now. UDK Plus gets you instant access to the Dynasty Pass. We have been uh, knee-deep in uh, rookie rankings and draft prep, and so... I'm uh, I'm belly button level now. You were... Uh, what did I say, though? Knee. He's, yeah, Knee. yeah. We're... we're almost yeah. fully submerged. We're past the, the, the point of no return. I'm hoping to drown soon. <laughs> uh, be all the way underwater. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, we're to, hoping that too. <laughs> Thanks, bud. You could just submerge without without well, drowning. I'll try to hold my breath, but you can't breathe underwater. Snor Mike. Give him a snorkel. <laughs> that's the thing. Um. So that's ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome in. I can't breathe underwater. Also, on that note, um, if gills. if you are someone that has already bought the ultimate draft kit, you got the UDK plus. Um, and you've taken a look, you are still entered into that, even if it was before yeah. now. Anyone who gets it by uh, March 1st, you, you'll be entered in that. But maybe you bought it the day it came out, Super Bowl Sunday, and you went and you looked at the rookie rankings and the uh, the Dynasty startup rankings. Those have really been evolving. You know, it, the, the last week, I know mine have personally changed quite a bit. So if you're doing a startup or you're – you know, you took a look already. Take another look at the rankings, and um, you know we, we will continue to make sure we polish those as we get closer and closer to the draft. 
That is true. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. Really, the headlines right now are around the franchise tag. Um, There are a number of running backs that, at least of this recording time, have been, uh, it's been said that they're not going to be franchise tag Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard, uh, Saquon Barkley, Austin Eckler. All of those players, at least as of this recording, uh, pretty strong words being put out that they will test free agency. So that's big. I mean, those are big and names. And be allowed yeah. to test yeah, free agency. Yeah, be allowed. And, um, you know, we have a couple of players, though, that it seems like, one that we have confirmed, T. Higgins, wide receiver for the Bengals. The franchise tag has been placed on T. Higgins. Is that that is that is that what is, we're hearing? That right? is official. Um, and so he will not be going anywhere. The other one, I think you're alluding to, is Michael Pittman Jr. Who it see that one is not official. Has not been done. It's just been said that they either will or they'll work out a deal. Right. And they have until March 5th. The deadline to uh, place these tags on players is coming up here uh, next week on the 5th. Yeah, that's always it's fun to see what happens. I mean, the the cap is going up in the NFL in terms of the salary cap um, significantly more than people even expected. It's somewhat of a rebound from the COVID era reductions due to the fact that fans weren't attending games and they had to cut things back at that time. But it does mean that you know every year we talk about cap space, but the cap changes and teams have the ability to kick the can down the road to become more flexible with restructures. And it allows teams that seem like they weren't going to be in contention for certain players to to be in contention or to extend players that we didn't see them keeping. And at least right now, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman, two of the the what would have been the biggest fish in the wide receiver pool, they don't seem like they're going anywhere. Nope. So that is a that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, which would make uh, Mike Evans the most. Mike Evans, uh, Calvin Ridley. Uh, Elvins? I, I heard I, Alvin. Yeah, I, I Alvin definitely Alvins? put an L in somewhere. Yeah, not sure where, but uh, I was thinking Calvin Ridley. So it kind of gotcha. uh, okay merged. Um, so Higgins, Pittman, are, were you surprised? I mean, for me, the Higgins, it's it's gonna be what twenty one million dollars uh, for that, a year. I don't recall the number. Kyle, can you confirm that number? I think it's twenty one million dollars. He says correct. I mean, you, it's you got a microphone, right, Kyle? Yeah, but it he's... is correct. Twenty-one right. million. Thank oh, you. gross! Thank you. Gross! Yeah, don't talk. Kyle, on yeah, this show. don't talk, Kyle. Uh, gross! It's. I, I don't think it's all. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of money. They they have money, so that all right. they, like they can. Good I'm saying that they have it. they have some cap space, and maybe you don't want to. I mean, this is the perfect thing for the Bengals if you don't lock yourself in long term with T. Higgins, but give this group a like last Another year. Shot. Last year got deleted with just unfortunate injuries. They felt like they had a chance to make a Super Bowl run with those with the wide receivers. So what will be very interesting then to watch for the Bengals is do we get a day two draft capital of a wide receiver? Because that would be the action that says that T. Higgins is going to get his money, he'll play one year, and then he'll be somewhere else. Tyler Boyd is a free agent, not expected back with the team. Which, uh, just quick dynasty – Check your waiver wire. See if Charlie Jones is on the waiver wire. He could – not that Tyler Boyd, Tyler Boyd was super valuable when the the big two were on the field, uh, but he's just a name that could be out there uh, on your on your uh, uh, waiver wire as well. Um, yeah, do, do – <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I'm just gonna peel. Yeah, go I'm gonna for pe- it. Just I'm gonna put, peel, peel it back, back the curtain. Um, there, there is another receiver beyond Charlie Jones that I think um, I've got him on my dynasty roster stash. Is it Yoshi Voss? Yoshi Voss? I, I, Andre I, I Yoshi think, Voss? I think so. But when you, but uh, wait, but none of us wanted to be the first to try it. Yeah. Hey, I owe, I brought up Charlie Jones. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> A real uh, hero. Do yeah. we have a do we have a pronunciation guide on Charlie Voss. Jones? Yeah. Um yeah, I O S I V A S. Um which says obviously Yoshivas. Yoshivas. Yeah. Yeah, but it, either, either way both of those guys see if a, also known as Yoshi from now on. Okay. Oh, Yoshi. much yeah. easier. Yeah. Um what else? DeMarcus Robinson coming back to the Rams. He he really made a lot of plays late in the season for them. 
one year deal yeah. for uh, about a quarter of that uh, T. Higgins money. I've seen him as a pretty good uh, draft deal right now in best ball. I could see that for sure. I mean, the odds of Cooper Cup getting hurt at some point during the season seem to be very high anyways. Yeah, fair. So, um, yeah. And we got some news that Tyler Higby uh, looks to looks like he'll start the season on Pup. I mean, he got hurt so late. In, yep. Was it the playoff game? I think it was. It was that late? I'm pretty sure it was the playoff oh. game. Um, but, you know, you're talking middle of next season. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes what the davis allen chatter yes. interesting yeah davis allen is a it's another great name to look on your dynasty yeah uh yeah. It, yeah yeah you're you're upset because i picked him up in our main dynasty league is that i know he was rostered in that league i don't know when he became unrostered but you you put him back on your team and then yeah. i just and then you were sad to see that but yeah davis allen uh, uh is a worth worthy dynasty pickup at tight end it's this is the season of Go find contract situations and the, especially at the tight end position because starters for it not I'm not saying elite players but but tight ends who will get a starting job and then in a pinch you can put them in they this is the time that they're they're just available on the way last way. year at this time or or a little bit earlier than yeah. this it was Ferguson yep you know we were telling people go pick up uh Ferguson of the Cowboys because Schultz is moving on and he could step in and then he was a very very relevant fantasy option this oh, last yeah. year all right any other news Brooksy do you have anything There's for us two pieces of little news uh it has been okay. reported that uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors will not be doing all the fun stuff at the combine yeah they'll be there and do like interviews but and I don't blame them but I'm mad at them. Yeah, you'd like to see the numbers, but like he can gain nothing from it. Yeah, if I were him, no chance I test I or wouldn't catch even go. or anything, but I'm still mad that you're not because I want to see it. Yeah, I mean, they, um, Kyle is saying we did. Just, we got news that uh, Roma Dunze will run. Okay. So, well, that'd be fun. At least we get one of them. Yeah. I mean, he... Uh, Does that make him feel like a loser? No, it's like oh, your I feel like, like it's the opposite. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta. Yeah, with, with neighbors and Harrison not there, like he's kind he's of the, the star. Now. He's he's the the BMOC. Okay, you know what that means, right? Big man on campus. That's yeah, right. yeah, That's right. yeah. Uh, top ten pick, maybe. Uh, we we've been going through the wide receivers like crazy, but it's like you could see ten to twelve really good names off the board by the end of the second. But uh, what's crazy is you could see ten wide receivers off the board. Before you see a running back off yeah, the board. Yeah, it really is true. And it, it, it's a deep class. It's really ironic because right now you've got four guys that are clearly on most people's big boards at the top, the consensus four. And after that, when it goes to from five to like 12, any one of those players could be the next one drafted. And, and, and I don't remember it being that wide a range. Uh, our Dynasty show, Mike just had a great episode this last week going through the incoming rookies and then tomorrow our dynasty show will go through the second half of those mm -hmm. uh rookie wide receiver prospects what's crazy in the way it's setting up right now is you have maybe 10 11 12 wide receivers that could go off the board before a running back the running back class seems very uh inferior to previous years the top running back off the board on a lot of people's lists is jonathan brooks who is coming off of an ACL injury. Mm -hmm. And teams that might be looking at the classic, hey, I'm just going to draft the running back and make him my starter, now have Henry Jacobs, Saquon, Eckler, Pollard on the free agent pool to decide which of those options you want to to, to use. Do you have the confidence in a Braylon Allen or a, a Jonathan Brooks or whomever, Trey Benson, you guys love? Mm -hmm. Blake Corum. Uh, Blake Corum, yeah. Or do you just like – rent a guy for a year because i could see out of those five free agent running backs you see in multi-year deals out of these guys yeah uh, i mean I, saquon, saquon and josh jacobs i think will get multi-year deals derrick henry will probably get a one year i think pollard could get a one year as well i, I agree like a reprove it or something like um it might be structured as like a two-year but where they can cut them after one because you could go pay pollard for a year and then come back to next year's draft that might be stronger at running back i don't know um, all right, that'll do it for news and notes. We're going to jump right into the coaching changes. Coaching Carousel. This year we have eight new head coaches, 
15 new offensive coordinators. Last offseason was just five head coaching changes. So uh, it's up. Last year's five changes. I mean, it's, it's, you're not wrong to say last year was only five. But imagine a world where there are 32 jobs. <laughs> right. And five became available. There's only 32 in the world. And five opened up. Look, imagine my luck that I can try and get a job as a coach. This is – so. you better love football because this is not – this cannot be good for your health. Give me a reaction to – I'm going to read the coaching changes from last year. Just react to them for me briefly. A sound, a word, whatever you want okay. to do. Okay, all right. Um, let's start with uh, the Panthers' Frank Reich. Goodbye? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's already gone. Yeah. Um, the Broncos, Sean Payton. Okay. Was, okay. Yeah. I think it's okay. Yeah. Uh, the Cardinals, Jonathan Gannon. TBD. They they tore it down to the nubs. You can't tell. It's just like a lost year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. an it, eval year. No, no eval. You're uh, like, pew, 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 boom. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. D'Amico Ryans. Sensational. Yeah. And then uh, Shane Steichen. I, I think that was a great hire. Yep. I, I, I like it a lot so far. Um, what's interesting is before we jump into the new hires, this is worth mentioning because the list is kind of insane. But when you're not hiring an offensive-minded head coach and you look back historically all the way back to 2018, which um, I don't know how many coaches this is. It looks like about 20. If you're not hiring an offensive-minded head coach, it has not been good. No. And you're going back to like Patricia and Wilkes and Fangio and Flores and Matt Rule and uh, – <sighs> Yeah, sorry, Matt Ja Rule, uh, Joe Judge, and Ron Rivera, and Brandon Staley, and Lovey Smith, and I mean, I almost forgot Lovey Smith was the coach for a year. I guess that was um, was he the whole year or was he interim? He didn't I, stick around. I think if you are a defensive head coach, you really need someone like C.J. Stroud. You know, then then yeah. then because Demico Ryan's is the one name. Yeah, so far. he's doing he's doing great. Great, great head coaching that quarterback. So uh, just to throw it out there, the two head coaching hires this past year that, that we're going to talk about today, Gerard Mayo, Mike McDonald. So those are the two defensive-minded head coaches with a shot. Yep, and, and part of it, I mean, just me trying to figure out what's going on because offense, like if you're not the offense, your OC position, it turns over because mm -hmm. if, you, if you're – a good team, and your offense was capable. Your OC is getting a head coaching job. Bobby Slowick, the uh, the except for this year that the they turned him down. The offensive coordinator for the Texans next year will probably be a head coach. That's that's right. my guess. He could have taken a job this year, and so Ben Johnson could have taken a job. Yeah, and they, and they said no. They wanted to wait for better opportunities. But your point, Mike, is then all of a sudden this defensive head coach now has to go out and find. Yeah, they've got to replace and they, find a way to make the offense work. It doesn't they have to hit again, and it doesn't quite happen the same with defensive coordinators constantly getting hired away. All right, let's let's begin with the Atlanta Falcons' new head coach, new offensive coordinator. I think they maybe surprised some of the uh, of the public with their hire of Raheem Morris, only because Bill Belichick's name had been circling in Atlanta. But they certainly didn't surprise anybody that has been around the NFL. Raheem Morris is one of the more respected uh, names in in football. And he's been a head coach before and is going to be the head coach taking over for Arthur Smith. Immediately hires Zach Robinson at offensive coordinator. Reactions to this, obviously we had a lot of, of narrative discussion on Arthur Smith and the impact to Pitts and Bijan and London and – the entire offense. I, I would react positively of it, like the hiring of Raheem Morris was fantasy wise going, oh, okay, here we go. But they went into the uh the department store. They got that <laughs> they got that Cologne Day McVeigh. Uh Zach Robinson, who was an LA Rams assistant for what the past four years or so, a passing game coordinator for them as well. So you you have to make the presumption that they're going to bring that offensive philosophy over. And it, it, when you have the right players in that offensive philosophy, I think good things happen. So I will be excited to see uh, this team get away from, what, the 30, 31st in passing percentage, fourth in rushing, like balance that out. Which led to 25th in points per game, by the way. Yeah, it was yeah. – well, yeah, because despite the fourth highest rushing rate, 
They ranked 28th in expected points per rush attempt. So when you're really bad at that, you know, you just want to keep doing it. Um, <laughs> you, you have to establish it. Jason. Zach Robinson coming in, I think, is going to be hopefully long-term good for fantasy. This was a PFF senior analyst um, That's wild. A, a, a handful of years ago. So he is not one of these anti-metric type of guys go with the gut. And he's really focused on quarterbacks, and and I, I watched. I love his, the gut, man. <laughs> watched his uh, uh, press conferences and and read what he's written on quarterbacks, and I think that is their focus right now. Their focus is find their quarterback. So they're sitting at what, like pick eight, I think. Yes, yeah, eight every overall. Year they pick the Falcons are locked <laughs> at eight. So I, I feel like, I mean, I I I I placed the wager today that they're taking a specific quarterback. At eight, but I, I think they will. You keeping it a secret? I, I, I think mean, they'll take JJ McCarthy, but okay. it's it's so er, it's so early. I'm not telling. My point, it, it did come but it's very specific. I, I'm just saying. Uh, I you I, can't bet it. I did. <laughs> well, I didn't want. I didn't want to make people have to you know uh, follow suit. But gotcha. um, we yeah, I, I think they are certainly um, focused on the quarterback. I, I think that's a good point to bring up, though, because you know there, there's excitement in the fact that Arthur Smith is out the door. But there's still a lot of question marks with regards to who's behind center. You know, a lot of the efficiency, it was that way not because the running game just was unsuccessful, but it, it, they ran so much in some ways because they couldn't efficiently pass the ball. Like, it, it's a bit of a chicken or egg scenario there. You know, the confidence level in Heineke to, to Ritter to Heineke to Ritter, I mean, it was obvious that there was no confidence, right? I mean, Arthur Smith even got up in a press conference and, you're you're my guy, and then you know five minutes later he changes it because they didn't feel confident throwing the football down the field. We got nothing out of Pitts. London was inconsistent, and then Bijan. We know how talented he is in the passing game. It's going to come down to the quarterback more than it will Arthur Smith just leaving town, yeah. in my opinion, for the I, passing game to succeed. I, I, I agree completely, and and obviously if they were to make a push, go out and get Kirk Cousins, who baby, I would be so excited. Um, if they draft a quarterback, even if you like the quarterback they're drafting at eight, uh, you're going to bet against the weapons for fantasy, the receiving weapons with a with a rookie quarterback. So, um, but it, it's it's some change in an offense that has a lot of exciting, enticing weapons. So we can hope for the best there and see what that offseason quarterback ends up being. We'll take a quick break and come back and talk about our next team. Well, 32nd in points per game, 32nd in total yards, 32nd in passing yards. That was where Carolina ranked last year. And, um, well, since 2000, Carolina's 4.7 yards per pass attempt ranked 763rd <laughs> out of 766. Oh, man. So what you witnessed um, – as you peeled your eyes open and forced yourself to watch, was an all-time terrible offense. And not so, the worst. No, <laughs> there were there were yeah. three worst teams in the last twenty-three and years. Only seven hundred sixty-two better teams. But um, Carolina, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, Dave Canales comes over from Tampa, from Seattle. The TLDR, the headline on Dave Canales is that he turned two quarterbacks that had very low expectations for their futures in Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield into like playoff caliber quarterbacks. And so in terms of a strategic hire, you just invested your entire future on Bryce Young. We got to like this hire of Dave Canales. Yeah. I, I don't blame them for taking the shot at this. I mean, if you say, Oh, two years ago, he was with Geno. People didn't expect much. He looked like a wasted career, and then he had a fantastic season. And then last year, once Baker seemed like he was done and he was a backup to Kyle Trask, he goes in and, and resurrects him, and we've got this all this investment in Bryce Young. We need someone that can come in and hopefully get the most out. I don't mind taking the shot. I do think that it is a much lower odds of it working, like we just talked about, 763rd of, of 766. It wasn't like... Hey, it wasn't that good. You know, we saw Baker before Dave Canales be great. He had one of the best rookie quarterback seasons 
um, ever when he was a Brown, and, and obviously it, it got bad. But we have not seen Bryce Young do anything good or show flashes yet of brilliance in the NFL. So I believe this is a tall task, and more than likely it's going to be one of those situations where two years from now we're going to be talking about who the Carolina Panthers are hiring as their head coach. Well, because you don't believe in Bryce Young. Correct. So uh, that's an important thing to bring up here and now because there will be additions to this Carolina Panthers offense, and they're all going to be dependent on Bryce Young's success. So so let me let me just ask the question to, to quantify it momentarily here. What is the percentage chance that you think Dave Canales turns Bryce Young into a um, – I guess I'll say franchise quarterback for the team. Somebody that's going to be their quarterback for the next five years. What is your percentage chance? 11%. Okay. I, I will go I'll go 35%. That's pretty high. I'd be about 20, 25. 20. The, so, uh, I mean, that that's going to say a lot. Because if they have to reset both the, the head coach and the quarterback in two years, I mean, this, this franchise is – what, David Tepper – He's not going to be happy. No, and he will make, throw drinks all over the place. He will make moves immediately. Uh, the big glaring difference here for for Dave's team uh, compared to the other ones, uh, the Seattle Seahawks had two Pro Bowl caliber wide receivers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Buccaneers, it, maybe if we, I don't know if yes, we call God with that. Yes, but you have, Mike, you have Mike Evans who, uh, despite all the jokes on this show, Mike Evans will go into the Hall of Fame. Yes. Like, it's so... Yeah, uh, and you got Adam Thielen and Who? Jason will be picketing though, right? Isn't yeah. that what we said? Well, if there's the first ballot. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want Mike Evans you, is a Hall of Famer. You'll he's just pick not, at the first ballot. He's yes. just not going to get in the first ballot. Uh, so you have you have Thielen and then uh, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. and you have no first round pick. So they're going to have to be very creative uh, if they're or. Find a find a puka, find a diamond in the rough. If they're able to really fix this thing, yeah. I mean, if you can find a puka, that'd be yeah. Look, they're not just everywhere. No, no. You sometimes you got to dig. Uh, Brad Idzik is the new offensive coordinator. Okay, Brad. Good luck, buddy. Go get him. <laughs> this is this is the big one. Yes, in my opinion, Brad. It, no, no, the next, no, no, no. The, the Sorry, next oh, team. Moving on. The oh, next man. Team. It's the biggest name. It's probably the biggest fantasy. His family impact. had gathered round. Uh, the, do the we need stereo. to say more about it? No, no. Yeah, right. okay. we, we need to be done All talking right. about Brad. The Los Angeles Chargers, they got their man, Jim Harbaugh, coming from Michigan and a national title. New head coach. Great hire, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you see these uh, nicknames? So. Uh, Pro Football Reference, incredible site. Uh, they often have nicknames. I I don't know where they. No, get I think theirs. these are their like official. official. Yeah. All right. Well, let me try these on for you, Jay. If you, don't read them. Don't okay. read them. I uh, I had already seen them. Oh, okay. Well, Jim Harbaugh, apparently also known as Captain Comeback, or Dog. <laughs> I saw that. And I was like, <laughs> wait, his nickname is Dog. Dog. Just Dog. Now, did did someone just hear over here? Someone walking up and say, "What's up, Dog?" They're they're like, like, oh, they're people call him like dog. The, people call Harbaugh dog. The, the bounty hunter. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is the same guy. Jim Harbaugh was the uh, the prize dog. Dog, sorry, dog was the <laughs> no. I can't do it. Um, <laughs> look, Harbaugh has had nothing but success at every level. He was the prize. I like that. Did Jeremy just chimed in with the uh, uh, Jim Hard Dog? <laughs> <laughs> I like it a lot. Thanks. Thanks, Al. <laughs> you got it. You uh it's honestly pretty good. Um Dog. <laughs> Jim Hardog. <laughs> well, oh. Okay. Hey, hey, all, right. all right. Andy, what were you saying? <laughs> well, I uh, Jim. Yeah, he's had success at all levels. Is replacing Brandon Staley. The clock ran out. There was optimism around Brandon Staley. They were a it was an offense that we were excited about in the beginning. He was going for it on fourth down. Justin Herbert had a lot of success fantasy wise, Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, but the uh, time rolls on, right? We're not winning enough ball games last year. Injuries, struggles. Eckler's going to be a free agent testing the water. He, he probably won't be back. Um, final year for Mike Williams. Keenan Allen is he, he he's there but it's his final year and he's getting older. 
and is the number one cap hit for all wide receivers. So why why do we make a big deal about Jim Harbaugh? The reason being, he are brought you, in Greg Roman. I'd say, are you? I don't disagree with them. This was the high profile hire. As a fantasy player and a fantasy uh, analyst, are you excited no. for this? Mm -mm. No, not at all. No, I, I, I've, and, and, it, and let's explain that in the context of Greg Roman, so the Gre offensive coordinator. Greg Roman, we we've seen Greg Roman, <laughs> Greg, Greg Roman, Roman <laughs> with uh, Jim Hardog in the past. Oh. We saw them for four years together, and the passing attempts of those four years, they were the thirty first, thirty first, thirty second, and twenty ninth in passing attempts, and we have far more experience with Greg Roman past that. And we're not talking about, hey, he usually is in the bottom half of passing attempts on his offenses. It's not like he's in the bottom 10 usually of his passing attempts. It's he's in the bottom three or the bottom or the bottom. It's it, like he checks it after the week and is like, I need to get this lower to I, keep my position. In all of his years, I'm just going to read the passing attempt rank. 31, 31, 32, 29, 31, 32, 32, 32, 9. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. 28. I mean, so we already know what they want to do. They want to run the ball. They want to win ball games with that style. And it probably will work. I think it's just a great hire for Chargers fans I mean, and for winning ball games and making playoff appearances. And But it's not. It doesn't feel like what we want with fast pace of play, a lot of passing, getting the most out of Herbert. I'm on the clock right now, um, and I'm staring down. Like uh, Herbert is at a value, and I'm like, ah, I don't want to. I don't know if I want to take him. So I'm going to ask you two guys right now on you know whatever t today is February 27th. Um, would you take Herbert or Kyler? Kyler. Kyler. Okay, and that's not it. a blacklisting of Herbert. That would be the dumb thing to do. We we just spent an off season with McCarthy taking over for Kellen Moore and uh, ascribing to him a run first defensive offense that turned into Dak Prescott and Ceedee Lamb winning you a title. But <laughs> these are not just words. These are like Jim Harbaugh in Michigan barely threw the football. Greg Roman wasn't even over his shoulder saying less throwing less. It, it, this is a combination that wants to be hard-nosed, and they don't have a lot of cap space. I mean, they are right now the odds-on favorite to for the destination where Blake Corum, running back, it would, make would sense, go yeah. um, because it was Jim Harbaugh's running back at Michigan, and he's, you know, got the – I think he's got the chops to take it 20 times a game. And But what does it mean for the passing game? It, it means that they're not going to – they're not going to put the ball into – Justin Herbert's hands unless they have to. That's how it feels to me. And let, look, if your defense struggles and you can't play defense, then you, you're going to end up throwing the football a ton. But if they are in neutral game scripts, I would not be shocked if they were one of the highest running offenses this year. And, and unless it's Justin Herbert running it, that's going to hurt. It's going to hurt Keenan. Yeah. It's going to hurt Mike Williams. It can't hurt Quentin Johnson. He can't go. I mean, he's <laughs> he can't fine. hurt us he's, anymore. Honestly, less targets for him. He's happy. The 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 days of Keenan Allen being a just a PPR warrior, it feels like yeah, that it, it may be over. So, um, yeah, there, I think there's going to be a lot of fear, which means that maybe those players, maybe the Chargers, will be drop non running backs will be dropping down the board a little bit. And so you're going to be stuck in the Jason situation where he's staring down Kyler or Herbert, or you're going to be staring down just um, you know Keenan Allen and some maybe, I don't know, Zay Flowers. Yeah, because what, what are you going to do? Keenan's ADP, I think, will still be rather high. I mean, he was he was he's, he's phenomenal a, this year. He's like the wide receiver four great in player points per game, and I and I think still could continue to do that at a high level. We just I don't think we'll see the the 10 plus catch games that we're used to. So that that's the lay of the land. By the way, he's going at wide receiver 25 and underdog. Okay, that's But that's Yeah, I'll take that. That's interesting. That makes sense yeah. to me too. I mean, he's not a ceiling week to week. We guy. also don't know what the Chargers are going to do with their cap situation yet. Uh I I mentioned that number 1 cap hit in all of the NFL is Keenan Allen. Number 2 cap hit in all of the NFL is Mike Williams. So they're going to have to at the wide receiver at the position? wide receiver okay. position. So um Maybe they restructure. Maybe they cut. So the two highest cap hits are your wideouts on a team that now wants to run. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> cool. Yeah.
Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, they, they avoided mutiny and revolt, and they brought back Antonio Pierce, whom the team loved, which, I mean, look, I they went 5-4 and four with Antonio Pierce. And so it's a bit of a surprise to me that they are going to at least come out and say that Josh Jacobs can go test free agency. I I still think there's a chance he comes back here. It mm-hmm. seemed like could be. Antonio Pierce had a fondness for what he could do in the offense. Especially Definitely does. Combine that Luke Getze is now the offensive coordinator for the Raiders, and his calling card over the last two seasons has been overseeing an offense, number one and number two, in rushing. Yeah, this is going to be a team that is paying close attention to the quarterbacks in the draft. Uh, they've already come out and said that. They're a team that's, that could trade up. They could pick up one of the rookies and because uh, they don't really have they don't really have a quarterback. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo's gone, and uh, that's a position they need to address. And then running back would be Zamir White plus something in free agency. But the, the recipe here for Antonio Pierce is going to be to run the football, to play great defense, which I do think they have a good defense. They and I do. Think, yeah. I think they'll continue to be a good defense with Antonio Pierce. Crosby and, is – Crosby's got to be one of the most fun players to watch in the NFL. He's just – he's a maniac out there. Um, I love I love a lot of the talent on the roster. I don't like these coaching hires. I thought Luke Getze was already a terrible offensive coordinator last year, and I'm not it sure that surprising. I think Antonio Pierce is a good head coach. I, he certainly motivated them, and the team, the players, loved him. They basically – demanded that he stay on as head coach. And that's all great and fun and fine and dandy. Unless. Unless he's not actually a great head well, coach and there was lose, just motivation. Yeah. And unless yeah. you lose. And I, I you know, I'm, I'm very, very, very uninspired by Antonio Pierce-Luke Getze combo. Interesting. Yeah, I like I like Pierce. I don't like Getze. And I am concerned with how they'll compete in the division. That is going to be a problem. Um, also, Getze was not their number one choice. I mean, their number one choice was Cliff Kingsbury. Like, if you go watch Antonio Pierce talk about it, like, he expected Cliff Kingsbury to be the offensive it coordinator. It was reported that he was going to do a deal there. and then Yeah, like, it, Pierce thought that was happening, and then it wasn't. And, um, you know, he, he made a joke about Magic Johnson, you know, stealing him because, you know, Magic Johnson <laughs> – Owns the command owns the commanders. Oh, okay. And so you know, it's, that's it right. Took Cliff that's Kingsbury right. away. <laughs> what is you're the, trying to find the connection? Yeah, I'm like a real hip, modern day reference. No, no, just the yeah, real no, magic. No, Johnson. it was good. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Let's move on to the four and three New England Patriots, who finished fourth in the in the division. Uh, four and thirteen. What did I say? Four and three. They played very few games. I'm so sure I said thirteen, and I didn't, huh? I I maybe everyone's maybe. saying no. Four and, four and three. That's okay. really weird when your when your brain does that. Yeah, yeah, it does it all the time. Yeah, J- Jason's a master. Jason's like that's normal. What did I say? Gerard Mayo, the new head coach of the New England Patriots, and that is weird. I mean, it's just weird to go into a season and not have Uncle Bill at the helm. We 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 have a season where we're not going to get Bill Belichick press conferences. That's sad. I don't watch those anyways. Oh, the highlights. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Van Pelt taking over for Bill O'Brien as the offensive coordinator. He's bringing Some of you over... know him as Gregory Alexander Van Pelt. Right, and that would be his mama. Um, he's bringing over the system from the Browns, similarities to what the Browns ran under Kevin Stefanski. So you expect a good running game, I think, here. Uh They've got a they've got a really nice system in place for the ground attack and the offensive line system. So I feel like we're saying the same thing for several teams. I mean, we've already had the convers. I mean, just the running attack and and, right. and what they're going to put into place. We had the conversation. Was it on this show or the footcast where we said if neighbors goes to Arizona and Harrison went to New England, who are you taking? Yep, right. And I would take neighbors. I choose what? Harrison to Arizona. <laughs> well, that is my choice as well. <laughs> Hold on. What if I tell you? That new offensive coordinator, Alex Van Pelt, his <sighs> nickname is Pill. Mm. Like take a chill. Like take pill. a chill pill, yeah. A- no, like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Or like that too. I mean, there's <laughs> Wait, is that Kyle, were you telling me that's actually why he's called? No, pill? he's not actually Oh, that was a joke? No, it's correct. That, that I was, is true. I what? was looking it up as well. Wait, wait, okay. wait, wait. The Pillsbury Doughboy? But Pill for short. Okay, but uh, okay. His 
his nickname. He's just chubby, so they call him <laughs> Bill. Oh man, <laughs> is he as ghastly white and a little soft? Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's this good. show is amazing. When when certain teams uh, don't inspire you for fantasy, we are inspired by their nicknames, right? We're uh, we're just here to bring the information. Yeah, Woo-hoo. it's going to be good defense. <laughs> it's going to be good things like, for Ramondre. The the big networks out there, they're all they're too scared to talk about dog and pill. <laughs> That's why you tune into this broadcast. That's right. Dog and pill. That'd be a dog good show. <laughs> they both want to run the ball. Dog <laughs> v pill. Can uh, I just get a little bit mad at at social media and Pillsbury uh for a second? Sure. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. What my, what Pillsbury do? My, they, you get something off your chest? Yeah, my son, my youngest son, he demanded just beat me down to do this like one of those you know you see the little short video of oh check out this new way to make a cookie bowl okay yeah you oh, take okay. you take the 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 muffin pan and turn it upside you down turn it upside yeah. down yeah. you sure. smush the thing the cookie dough over the the uh cupcake mold and then once you bring it out it's like a little bowl you yeah, put the you put, ice cream in the cookie yeah, bowl yeah yeah, yeah oh that- it looked so easy. Oh, no. My oven is ruined. <laughs> <laughs> it just dripped. I, I don't know. I put too much of this cookie dough, and it just, I was like, I, I went to check on it when the timer was oh. over, and actually, my son went to check on it first. And he you say, where'd the cookies go? He goes over there. He goes, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Pillsbury. That's it's not, ooh, it's uh-oh. And, uh, yeah, so I so got- It didn't pan, no ball. No, I still got to clean the no bottom of ball. my- uh, <laughs> The bottom of my oven now. So oh, what you get with them TikTok recipes? Huh? I know they look so, so they easy. Actually, like not it's, just parts, whole their whole things fall. Uh, yeah, on? just I think I put way too much. <laughs> it, it just it just apparently it expands when it cooks or something. I don't know. I was like, wait for your mom to be home. I'm not the baker. And then uh, he and didn't, then you ruined the and oven. then I ruined the oven. So <laughs> lessons taught. All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's take a quick break here, and we'll come back with some more breakdowns. All right, this week on the Dog and Pill Show, um, <laughs> let's move on to Seattle. Mike McDonald, Ryan Grubb, new head coach, new offensive coordinator. And so Pete Carroll and Bill Belichick, two of the oldest, I think they were the two oldest coaches in the league, are now, Believe so. mm-hmm, are now gone. And now he's being replaced by the youngest coach in the league who is exactly half of his age. Wow. 36 years old, uh, Pete Carroll leaves at 72. And their offensive coordinator needs no nickname. It's Ryan Grubb. Grubb. Grubb-a-dub. <laughs> what is it? Grubb-a-dub. Tub? Grubb-a-dub-dub. Three dub. men in a tub. There, there it is. Thank you. So uh, expectations for Seattle, who, who they've restructured the contract of Geno Smith, right? And uh, last year they were 22nd in points per game. It Gino fell back from his Dave Canales year. Uh, 21st in yards per game. Do we expect good things from Mike McDonald? So uh, Mike McDonald is, he's one of these defensive hires, so he will be hopefully leaning on uh, Ryan Grubb. How far will Ryan Grubb take this offense? I mean, his claim to fame is, you know, at the from the University of Washington. Uh, which things went okay for them last year. So can can we bring an exciting, high flying offense to Seattle? Uh, I mean, they were at, at least the pieces are still there. So I would, I think that the Seattle, the ADP of the Seattle players, I think will be very interesting. Kyle, can you pull up um, like where where DK and and Lockett are going and JSN. Yeah, yeah, and yes, and and JSN just to see because this it feels like there's going to be a lot of risk here. So yeah, DK Metcalf going at wide receiver twenty, JSN at thirty six, Lockett at fifty four. Yeah, so I mean that's there's a lot of the, the the risk is already kind of baked into that ADP there. They were um, seventh in passing percentage and twenty eighth in rushing percentage, and their strength is definitely what Kenneth Walker and Charbonnet can bring. So. Uh, you know, hiring a defensive-minded head coach that has an opportunity to, um, I don't know, bring in the Baltimore style of 
uh, yeah. of defense. Maybe that's so, what this team is looking forward to. That that should help the. We'll see though the other offense of college guys bringing their work to the NFL. I think it's been mostly missed. At least yeah. that, that's what my memory is telling I, I me. I can't think of great examples, and I could think of a ton of. I mean, like the, the <clears> recent failures. ones were like you know, like, well, Ja Rule was a colossal failure. <laughs> Chip Kelly. Uh, Chip, yeah, and then Cliff Kingsbury is <laughs> got I another mean, job. Cliff is back, but star. He was walked out of the NFL. Now, how will Eric Bieniemy do in the opposite transition? Uh, Probably well. poorly. <laughs> yeah, I it, it it'll be interesting. Tennessee, Mike Vrabel, another long time head coach gone. Brian Hallican, Hallican, hmm, that's the name. Brian Callahan taking over Nick Holtz, offensive coordinator. This was a team that was, you know, they had one identity last year: hand the ball off, thirty-first in pace of play, ninth in rush percentage. Uh, a new dawn, and, and he uh, he hired his he hired his papa uh, to be the offensive yeah. line coach, which was originally Bill Callahan's first. He's always uh, been job. he's always been good at that. So they were 32nd last year, so nowhere to go but up. I mean, I, I don't know what I don't know what there is to say about this Tennessee offense because you're losing Derrick Henry to free agency. And what else do you have? I mean, we don't know what Will Levis will be long term. DeAndre Hopkins was the leading receiver. He is old. And he could be gone. Yeah, I mean, Will Levis is is this the worst offense in the NFL? I don't think so because the Panthers are worse. Oh, but um, yeah. I do believe that this maybe Will Levis to me showed flashes. And and if you want to say, will Brian Call Callahan be seen as a good head coach? I call him Hallican. Hallican, go on. Go on. Um, will he be seen as a good head coach? It's just it. It's a synonymous question with well, is Will Levis good? Like that's the truth. If he can get the most out of Will Levis and he can get him to be a competent quarterback. That'll be good. Otherwise, you know, this is another. Didn't you say that you kind of thought Tennessee was the team in the top ten picks that you thought could, because their division is not as strong? And well, when like you're, you love, and didn't when you say you love Brian the, Callahan? <laughs> when you're picking for, I do like. I will say this: the whole nepotism argument of like, oh, these guys get their jobs because Daddy had them, right. you know, open the door. You can make that as a negative argument. I I actually see it as the opposite. Like this kid grew up in the NFL. The reason McVay was hired so young is because he grew up, what was it, his, like, his grandfather was a GM or something, the Shanahan tree, you know. Th these guys know ball, and, and they grew up and they've usurped their fathers now. I mean, he's hiring daddy as the offensive line coach. So I, I do like Brian Callahan, um, but he's going to be a failure if Will Levis doesn't step up. I mean, that's the sad reality of coaching. Maybe. I, I think that Callahan will be given the – the freedom of if you can see this year that it's not Will Levis that they'll probably keep him around to try and rebuild the odds are, who's next. The odds are just bad for this whole situation to me. Yes. Like Will Levis, you can say the word step up, but if you have the worst offensive offensive line in the league and you don't have a running game and you don't have pass catchers and and there's, you're not going to succeed. He's not going to be able to overcome that. I don't know that there's a worse quarterback in the league to be behind a bad offensive line because Will Levis cannot see pressure. I mean – he just gets smoked when guys come through. Washington has made the two most uninspiring hires for me <laughs> of the entire offseason. I feel like uh, in previous years we have been deluded enough to believe Washington's offensive weapons could be useful. Now we are having our hope squashed instantly in the offseason. Like I have no hope for Washington. Isn't this a kindness though? It's a kindness to us, I guess, but it is also a dashing of, of any dreams that we might have. Look, I, I, I'm I sorry, Washington fans out there, but Dan Quinn, let's give it another go at head coach, replacing Ron Rivera. I feel like you're basically replacing Ron Rivera with, yourself, with Ron Rivera, uh, another one. And then Cliff Kingsbury, how? How'd you get back? Who do I, you know, man? I, I would like to read you a quote of how it happened. Okay. All right. Um, quote, so. Well, did it work for those people? No, it never does. I mean, these people somehow delude themselves into thinking it might, but but it might work for us. Oh, uh, that's a Tobias <laughs> quote. Yes, yes, sir. yes. That is how the meetings went. <laughs> Tobias Funk was inside the commander's 
headquarters, and he said, it might work for us. I mean, and Cliff had competition for his services. So well done, Cliff. You've, you've got an agent that works for you. We've been around the Cliff Kingsbury offense long enough. Good luck. Good luck. I mean, Dan Quinn, he, he ran a great defense in Dallas. I'll give him credit for that. I do think that, you know, he, he obviously led a team to the Super Bowl. It, this is why I say it reminds me of Ron Rivera. One Super Bowl appearance in Atlanta. Ron Rivera had his one Super Bowl appearance with Cam Newton. Um, both quarterbacks were the MVPs of those seasons where they went to the Super Bowl. And both and, men are usually very well respected and loved. Like uh, the people I, around I think, Dan Quinn and the people yes. around Ron Rivera absolutely love these a men. A year. A year and a half to a, a year to a year and a half, you are beloved, I think, where you're at. And then it but just for, runs out. For fantasy purposes, this is Cliff Kingsbury. Dan Quinn's irrelevant. He's the defensive Correct. head coach or the CEO here. So they brought in Cliff Kingsbury and now we just go, okay, well, you know, he had Hopkins, right? And he had Hopkins run a route bush, if you remember that, where yeah. he just was like on the left running the same little two yard out for a billion times. Uh, maybe the that's, ball though, behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, every, that's every Terry McLaurin play. thing. So like, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much out on this offense. Like many um, struggling, middling, uh, head coach replacing teams, it's about the quarterback. We've got to see who they – we don't know who the quarterback's going to be here. Um, it will – I mean – It'll be the number two pick. Yeah, it'll probably be Drake. Man. Yeah. And then we have – I'm going to read you the teams. Uh, the Bears, Bengals, Browns, Saints, Eagles, Steelers, and Bucks all made changes to the offensive of coordinator, not the head coach. So Shane Waldron arrives in Chicago, comes from Seattle – um, where they, you know, the offense struggled last year after a resurgent 2022. Cincinnati, they did not want a belly itcher. <laughs> nice. Uh, Dan Pitcher, the new offensive coordinator. He was their quarterback's coach. So just moving uh, familiarity with, you know, that's normally a good a good situation when you have a quarterback that is established and then you just next man up situation can run a similar offense. Ken Dorsey, who we saw fired midseason in Buffalo, takes over in Cleveland. <laughs> the NFL's funny, man. Um, Clint, Come on, Clint man. Kub Clint Kubiak takes over in New Orleans. I think this one's at least <clears throat> noteworthy. I mean, speaking of the, Cubes. the, the, the nepotism train, there is another Kubiak uh, in town, and the Kubiak offense, it has been very successful. So, I mean, we'll – Great, great running scheme, yes. usually so, for Alvin Kamara, finding more space. It did make me feel a little bit of hope for one more nice year from Kamara, which I have him on a couple of teams, and I've been very negative on his prospects. But the more I look at Kubiak, I say, okay, maybe. Maybe we get one more year out of Kamara. Uh, Kellen Moore arrives in Philadelphia, replacing Brian Johnson. I could not love what Philadelphia did more than what they did with with both of their their offensive and defensive okay. coordinator hires. I just think they needed – they tried the next man up. You know, they lost their OC in D.C. last year, and they're like, well, the guy's behind. This is your chance. Well, those guys behind failed. And so he's like, well, let's go out and get guys who have succeeded for a long time and proven that they're at least good at offense for an offensive coordinator and they're good at defense for a defensive coordinator and come in and run with a talented lineup. So I, I, I really, really, really like it. <laughs> <laughs> and just, uh, we'll remind people on Kellen Moore because it was it wasn't the best for the Los Ange Angeles Chargers. Uh, Angeles, what is going I don't on know, man. today? There were we're all we struggling got an enunciation here. Filter. Uh, they were 18th in offense Los this Angeles. past year, but you know the four years prior for Dallas, Kellen Moore helped oversee the number one offense in yards, 14th, first, 11th. So. He has a resume of success, despite last year being pretty bad. Uh, we got Pittsburgh. Oh. Number two. Oh, yeah. Arthur. Oh, I've got a plan. Arthur he Smith replacing Matt Canada. He's back, baby. Glad I can go ahead and filter the Steelers out of my plans. I mean, this is a 28th, 28th in points per game, 25th in pace of play, 25th in yards, 30th in pass percentage. Cool. Great. Let's bring in Arthur Smith. I the, mean, look, it means good things for Najee Harris. It means good things for Jalen Warren. The it really does. The only glass half full way I can come about this or look at it is in Tennessee, which 
has was Derrick Henry, uh, but at least for two years in Tennessee when Arthur was only the offensive coordinator, 12th in yards, second in yards. I mean, it was all predicated on the run game and, and, and Derrick Henry, of course. It but feels maybe Arthur Smith could be one of those guys who just he can't run the team. He has to only be focused on the offense. That's that's that's, that's my hope. No, I, look, there it's are fine. examples if, of that. It fe- yeah, I agree with that. But we know what his his uh, preference is with the offense. And to me, this feels like the hiring feels like the Steelers saying we don't have a quarterback, and we're going to admit that. Like we don't have a like you you could bring in a uh, a quarterback whisperer at offensive coordinator if you thought that there was a big gap to what you got from Kenny Pickett or Mason Rudolph to like uh, I don't know middle of the pack quality passer and it feels like they just said you know what we don't got one we don't have one so we're just gonna lean into what we do have and try to scrape our way through so in that regard I mean it doesn't mean good things for the pass catchers. I mean, are we? Where, where are you going to be talking about Pat Fryermuth next year? You don't even know if Mason Rudolph's a quarterback. Well, the is, number one targets to the tight end position is were from Arthur Smith. Is the Muth playing? Yeah, but can he get Luth? Is he going to play the Kyle Pitts role, or is he going to play the Jonu Smith role? He is made for the Jonu Smith role for Arthur Smith. Well, then we're all right. Yeah, baby. Yeah, right. I'm out. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in on the Muth. Yeah, go for it. Uh, Tampa Bay. They added Liam Cohen. Replacing Dave Canales, this will be – I think the big thing will be the loss of Canales and whether or not that impacts Baker. But you did have a year there. Um, it wasn't good for Geno when Canales left. There you go. And if these trends continue, Liam will be the Kentucky offensive coordinator. Next year? Next year. Oh, because he went uh, <laughs> Rams assistant, Kentucky OC, uh-huh. Rams OC, Kentucky OC. Yeah. And now he's got a fallback. Bucks OC. Wow. And then, hey Kentucky. Uh, yeah. How you- does Kentucky do that? <laughs> they they love Liam. They're just like, please don't go. And then he's just got a job if they want. Well, guess. maybe he goes. I'm only going for a year. Yeah. I'll be back. <laughs> Weird. I'm gonna go get this check real quick. Need that NFL insurance. I'll split the check with you. <laughs> Let me go for a year. Jeez. Um, all right, three days left. One final reminder as we close it down, your chance to get entered to win a listener league spot. If you pick up the 2024 UDK Plus, you can go to ultimatedraftkit.com, get a chance to play with us in the listener league and uh, jump right into the UDK, ultimatedraftkit.com. Thursday. I feel like I said that kind of that loud. Was, that was, was really loud. It was loud. too loud. I didn't back off the me. mic. Sorry, guys. Thursday. Thursday. Uh, we have a top ten things to remember episode. One of our, uh, one of the funnest episodes of the year. As we reflect on last season, things that we picked up that we learned. Jason's got his little black book. He writes his little notes. Uh, did any of the notes say like be better in league of record and don't let Andy win? Is that one of your tips for this upcoming? No. No. Last year it was remember <laughs> that I'm the champ. <laughs> okay, last mm. year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Did you make a note be better in the dynasty league? Oh boy. A new. Mm. Mm. We got two of your three tips, Jay. I hate you guys. <laughs> All right. Our free agent predictions episode is coming soon as well. Thanks to the Deucers, Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, Rap Scallion, for holding it down today. We'll be back on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.